Hi folks, uh, right back to uh, acrylic, I've done a watercolour before this one, <coughs> so uh, lots of colours, cadmium yellow, pale, medium, deep, yellow ochre, orange if I use it, alizarin, cadmium red, ultramarine, black, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna and Virid viridian for the shortcuts. I like, um, well, as you know, I do like making my greens with black and yellow, but the viridian is, is a very, very useful colour, not on its own, you have to mix it. Unless you're doing abstracts, of course. You can paint what you like then. Right, I'm going to use my gel, my VET gel. Thanks, Sid. Terrific stuff. And I, I don't know, it's just <laughs> ordered some, and I know others have ordered some as well. I always think there's a lot of uh, lot of money in animal farming or veterinary surgery, surg surgery and we're using it for our acrylic painting. Well there it is, blue tint, that goes, even on paper, it, uh, but I, I don't usually paint on white, I like to tint my, my painting, my surface, my watercolour paper, uh, but usually to cover up a, a previous painting, a watercolour painting. So don't throw your watercolours away. If you don't think they're very good, probably not. Save them for when you get into acrylic painting or oil painting because they make superb supports. Very versatile, you can frame them like an oil painting by sticking them to a piece of artboard or you can frame them behind glass and mounted where they will look equally beautiful. Now. That's been on there for at least a day. Look, it's, still, it's still loose, usable. So I'll, I'll make up a sky. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with this. But I, um, I'm beginning to, after all these years, beginning to put a lot of colour in patches over the sky. So that way it seems to be much more interesting, if not realistic. But then we're not after realism, are we? We're after impressionism. Abstract, abstract impressionism. Well, at least I am. So let's uh, get a bit of stuff on the brush, a bit of ochre, a touch of red, and just cover up. A bit of cadmium red in with the ochre, just to warm it up. Well, down here. This uh, lovely gel now I said about that blue I've got a bit of actual blue pigment in the underneath then it's so <laughs> I have to eat my own words now but the gel does lose its blue tint But the great thing is, it stays open. F uh, look, I, I should really change it because I'm picking up. Let's just clean it out and put a new bit in. I'm picking up some colours that are stuck or that are in the bottom of the uh, me lid and they're tinting the, the stuff. Uh, could have, should have washed it out, shouldn't I? Well, I'm going to paint something that's got trees and skies, possibly a bit of water. Oh, I got a bit more, another bit more. This will wash out the water because it's water-based till it's dry. Then it's, I suppose, it's waterproof. Right. Okay. Gel. So if you haven't seen seen it before, that's what it is. Agri Agri Health Blue Obstetric Gel Non-Drying. Not drying. Non-drying non lubricant for all farm animals. Non-drying lubricant. Well it, it does dry. Well it's mixed with acrylic paint, but you wouldn't use that for for veterinary purposes. Right, 
There we go. Nice clean dollop. Now this way, it's going to last me for years. That two and a half litre pot, oh, let's clean my brush again, in my dirty watercolour pot, which I haven't changed. Alright, we'll uh, get in a bit of bit of blue, a bit of red, a bit of white. Just a bit of alizarin crimson and some blue and a bit of the gel. My first uh, objective is to cover the uh, cover the paper with uh, or canvas the support with with paint because whatever I put on is going to change anyway. This is just an initial covering, killing the canvas, as we say in the trade. I watched um, a video this morning by, I can't remember the name now, but I think he put the commentary on afterwards and there was this backing of piano music that really irritated. So I don't think I'm alone in in this I found it very distracting and the painting was very good. It was a, a demonstration of in, in the style of Edward Wesson and it was jolly good but it just it just got in my brain this piano music. I love piano music but not on a video when the guy's talking. It was competing. Uh, right let's go down with a, let's have a bit of that orange. Bring the sky down here. I like low horizons with big skies. That ochre is lovely in there. Right, okay, that'll do for a minute. Just let that dry a bit. Usually you're fighting to do it before it dries, but here we're waiting for it to dry. Uh, right, um, I like stipple. Uh, what about you? I'm going to try one of these brushes for stippling. Uh, so I want to get a nice dark green. So I'll use a bit of gel, of course. Very similar to what I have been doing. I'm very much influenced in this sort of meadow, salt marsh, with uh, the salt marshes at Chichester. Actually, it's quite a good simple brush. Let's just bring these up a bit. So we're disappearing, getting smaller as we.
So we just go off into the distance now. I'll just clean the pallet. Just wiping it off a bit. It's got a bit murky and I need to put out some I need to put out some more ultramarine. So Wilco's ultramarine. A swig of my coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker really. But um We've got a coffee machine which my wife dug out, we haven't used it for years, <coughs> and it's, it's not bad. It's finding a coffee that, you, that I like really, it's the ones that I have been using are a bit bitter. I could do the whole sky like this. But uh, but I won't. I won't carry it through the sky or the foreground. Uh, Got to get this much darker now. I want some contrast in there. So red, yellow, black. Gel. Then I can stipple in some some lighter greens in there and bits of colour. Oops. Bring this down here. All right, get some uh, ochre in there. Try, try stippling, it's, uh, it's good fun and there's nothing new about it. Oh, they put a viridian now. I forgot, the one I did yesterday, I forgot to put wildflowers in. So I bunked some in on this. I'll go on the sky in a minute. I put a creek in, in it, because there is a little creek. This is um, on the Chichester Harbour area, near 
Chidham and uh, Nutbourne and if you've watched the previous ones uh, Mike Evans posted uh, a link to the Google Earth Which is quite, <laughs> I don't know how he did it, I couldn't do it, but it's lovely to, to see and then change the view around that bit of the uh, countryside, oh, I was really knocked over by it, there it is, he said is this it, is this, and he knew from my, my abstract sort of impressionist painting that that all the elements were there apart from the creek I didn't notice that I've got photographs of it somewhere but I did clean off a hard drive accidentally with about several hundred videos early videos and earlier photographs this is near well it's just just a, a scene really but in my mind, it's uh, Bosom is round the corner here, across. But you can't walk across. You have to come up to the main, to a sort of a secondary main road, and walk along to the bus stop, or, or walk. Because Bosom's on a peninsula as well, and it's it's beautiful. Well, it's a peninsula. There's Chidham down here somewhere, and then further over here is Portsmouth, and you can. You go far enough out on the, on the uh, salt marsh, you can see the Spinnaker Tower, which is lovely. Right, let's get some real good lights in there. Oh dear. Right, that, the sky should have dried by now. So let's go back and... Got some nice light behind there. It's a contrast between the dark and the light. That's the, the whole point of of landscape painting is to is to establish the lights and darks. Light. If you want something something to look dark, put it against something light. If your tones are too close, it's, it's sort of nothing. Light light there. The tones are too similar. Uh, right, a bit more lilac-y stuff on there, I think. Oh, it's just a bit of, bit of, bit of sort of blue. Right, now we'll put some light back in that. Just red and ochre, and plenty of white. Just bring that in there. Just Put the light into the tops of the trees or over the trees. They're still damp. Oh, we just lose some of that. As we're going into to give, try to create an illusion of distance there. Oh, I like it, that. Huh? Right, okay, that's uh... So I've got the uh, the painting I did of the, the recent ones. I've got it on my on my old tablet here.
I'm not bothered with the lighters in this. Wonder when I'll ever if I'll ever get back to uh, this area. We we were only there because we love camping in our trailer, but so we haven't got that now. Still a bit of movement. <sighs> oh, I think I was alright. See what I mean by putting lots of different colours around. I've still got the clouds in, the light clouds to give the contrast. Right now we're going to do a bit of work in in that foreground. What's what's it to catch some catch the light? Right, so we'll keep away from the black, we'll get some cadmium yellow medium, bit of viridian, chunk of white, and we'll, we'll keep, try to get in some uh, nice greeny between those uh, grasses. I've done this with the tide coming in, but I prefer just all the marsh. But I'll put some shadow colour in a minute. Ah, look at that. Uh, right, bit of, bit of bit of bluey lilac -y. Bit more red. We've got to have some shadow. Bit of gel. Still not enough light, uh, light in there. So here we go. Right, I think we can start putting in some uh, some puppies and cornflowers and stuff like that. Finish me coffee and a bit of detail on the uh, trees. Although I like that.
Alright, now some, some white. I'm sure there's a right brush for this, but so I've touched a blue and white now for the old little cornflowers. Right, I'm not going to do any more to that. I might just try and get a, some light, even lighter green. Right, I'm gonna put a bit of bit of orange in those trees and well, a bit of yellow. So the one I did there. Just going over a bit of a uh, bit of bright yellow. Right, I'm going to. I'm just fiddling that to death now. Right, I'll sign it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll put a mount on it, and we'll have a have a look. Uh, I really am a glutton for these uh, meadow scenes. I hope you're happy with them. Especially if you're a beginner or feeling your way into acrylics. The, the, the techniques are just infinite. I could have done that technique all over that, but or over here as well. But I thought, well, why? Got a little bit, bit of a rogue branch there. Uh, oh, I know we could always put a bird, bird in, can we? Bird of tea, two in. So we'll just have a bit of a purple. Just darken that blue with a bit of red, so. Uh, Thank you. 
tiny little birds, but that'll do. Okay, I hope you like that. It's quite it's quite a bright picture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. I'll get this uploaded. And uh, it's quite two. It's only eleven o'clock. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.